Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage, day one wrap up. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante with Jerry Chen, special guest who's been with us every year on theCUBE uh, since inception. Certainly every eight of us reinvent nine years straight. Jerry Chen, great to see you for our guest analysts, wrap up, BC, general partner, Greylock partners, good to see you. John, Dave, it's great to see you guys. Thanks for having me again. It wouldn't be a reinvent <laughs> without the three of us sitting here. And we missed last year, right, because of COVID. So we have so to make up for lost time. We did a virtual time. one. We did virtual stuff. We did virtual, it wasn't yeah. the same as in person. Definitely like not here. the same. Not the same thing. So um, it's good to see you guys yeah. again in person, less than six feet apart. So thanks. Yeah. 7,000 people here showing that the event's still relevant. Yeah. Some people would kill for those numbers. It's a bad year for Amazon, down from 60,000. Yeah. So ecosystem is booming. Okay, let's get to it. Day one in the books, new CEO, new sheriff in town. <laughs> His name's Adam Zlewski, your take. Um, well, Adam's new, but he's old, right? Some, you know, like something new, something <laughs> old, something blue, right? And so Adam was early Amazon, so he had that founding DNA. Left, you know, CEO of Tableau, acquired by Salesforce, came back a few months ago. So I, I think it was a great move, because one, he's got the history and culture under Jassy, so he's definitely the, the Bezos Jassy tree of leadership, but yet he's been outside the bubble, right? So he actually knows what it means to run a company, not on the Amazon platform. So uh, I, I think Adam's a great choice to, to lead uh, AWS, what we're calling like maybe act two, right? Act one, the first X years with Jassy, and, and maybe this is the second act under Adam. Yeah, and he's got, and, and Andy was very technical, hung around all the techies, James Hamilton, DeSantos, all the engineers, built that core primitives. Now, as they say, this cloud next gen's here, act two, it's about applications. Yeah. Infrastructure as code is in place, Interesting area, where's the growth come from? So look, you know, <laughs> the ecosystem has got to build these super clouds, or as you say, castles on the cloud, which you coined, but you brought this up years ago, that the moats and the value has to be in there somewhere. Do you want to revise that prediction now that you see what's coming from uh, Celebsky? Uh, okay, well, so let's refresh. Um, Graylight.com <laughs> slash castles, uh, it's work that like we did, but a lot of thought leadership from the two of you have informed my thinking of castles in the cloud, how to compete against Amazon in the cloud. So you argue act one, the startup phase, the first you know, X years of Amazon was from 2008 to you know, 2021, the first X years, building the platform, digging the moats, right? So what do you have? You have castle, the platform business, economies of scale, which means de decreasing marginal costs and nat natural network effects. So once the moat's in place and you have huge market share, what do you do for act two, right? You, now the moats are in place, you can start exploiting the moats for I think Adam talked about in your article, horizontal and verticals, right? Horizontal solutions up the stack, like um, Amazon Connect, CRM solutions, right? Um, horizontal apps, maybe the app layer, and verticals, industrials, financials, healthcare, et cetera. So I think Jassy did the foundation of the castle, and now we're seeing you know, what Adam and his generation would do for Act Two. So, so, so so there's like almost like an act 1A, because if you take the four hyperscalers, they're about maybe you do 120 billion this year, out of, I don't know, pick a number, it's many hundreds of billions, at least in infrastructure. Correct. And, and, and those four hyperscalers growing at 35% collectively, right, so there's some growth there, but I feel like there's got to be deeper business integration, right, it's not just about IT transformation, it's about deeper, so that's maybe where this connect like stuff comes, but you know, are there enough of those? You know, I didn't, I, I, haven't, I didn't hear a lot of that this morning. I heard a little bit ML, sure. AI into, sure. into Connect, but where's the next Connect, right? They've got to do dozens of those in order to go deeper. E either, Dave, dozens of those Connects or uh, more of those primitives. So the ML announcements today. So you look at what Twilio did by buying Segment, right? Deconstructed CRM to compete against Adam Slepsky's old acquirer, yeah. Salesforce.com. Right. They bought Segment, so Twilio now has communicates, like texting, messaging, email, but all the data come from segment. With consumption-based pricing. With consumption-based pricing. <laughs> so, right, so that's an example of kind of what the second act of cloud looks like. It may not look like full SaaS apps like salesforce.com, but these primitives, both horizontally, vertically, because again, what does Amazon have as an asset that other guys don't? Install based developers. Developers aren't going to necessarily build or consume SaaS apps, but they're going to consume things like these APIs and primitives. And so you look around, what, what's Cloud Act 2 look like? It may not be VMs or containers, it may be APIs like Stripe and billing, Twilio messaging, right? Concepts like that. 
So we'll see what the next active cloud looks like, and they announced a bunch of stuff today, serverless for the data analytics, right? Yeah, right. So serverless is this move towards not consuming raw compute and storage, but APIs. What about competition? Microsoft is nipping at the heels of AWS. John put them out Some of business say, <laughs> earlier today. <laughs> no, I said, quote, I'll just, let me rephrase. I said, if Amazon goes unchecked, sure. they'll an annihilate Microsoft's ecosystem. Because if you're an ISV, why wouldn't you want to run on the best platform? Sure. Speeds and feeds matter when you have these shifts of software development. Run on both. So, you know, I mean, you talk about the 80s, if you were at database, you wanted the best processor. So I think this Annapurna vertical integrated stacks are interesting because if my app runs better and I have a platform prefabricated or purpose-built platform to be there with for me, I'm going to build a great SaaS app. If it runs faster and it costs less, I'm going to flock to Amazon. That's just, that's my, my, my prediction. Um, so I think better <laughs> changes, right? And so I think if you're Amazon, you say cheaper, better, faster, and they're investing in chips, the proprietary silicon, to run better, faster. They're, they're machine learning training trips. But if you're Azure or Google, you got to redefine what better is. And as a startup investor, we're always trying to do category definition, right? Like, here's a category by spin. So now if you're, you're Azure or Google, there are things you can say they're better, and, and Google argued their chips, their TensorFlow better. Azure say our regions, our security, our enterprise readiness is better. And so all of a sudden the criteria of what's better changes. So from faster and cheaper to maybe better compliance, better visibility, better manageability, different colors, I don't know, right? You, you have to change the game because if you play the same game on, on Amazon's turf, to your point, John, it, it's, it, it's game over because they have the kind of scale, but I think Azure and Google and other clouds, the super clouds or, or, or sub clouds, are changing the game, what it means to compete. And so I think what's going on, just two more seconds, from decentralized cloud, be it Web3 and crypto, that's a whole nother can of worms, to edge compute, what uh, Cloudflare did with R2 and storage, they're trying to change the name of the game. Well, that's right. You know, if you go frontal against Amazon, you're going to get decimated. You got to move the goalposts for better. And I think that's a good way to look at it, Dave. What does better mean? So that's the question that's on the table. What does that look like? And I think that's an unknown. That's coming. Okay, back to the startups. Category definition, that's an awesome term. That, to me, is a key thing. How do you look at what a category is? On your sub, on your castles of the cloud, you brought up how many categories of? 33 markets and a bunch of sub-markets, yeah, yeah. Explain that concept. So, we did Castle on Clouds where my team looked at all the services offered Azure, Google, and Amazon. We downloaded the services and recategorized them to like 30 plus markets and a bunch of sub-markets. Because the reason why is, is apples to apples. You know, Amazon, Google, Azure all have databases, but they might call them different things. And so I think first things first is, let's give developers and customers kind of apples to apples comparisons. So I think those are known markets. The, the, the key in investing in the cloud or investing in general is you're either investing in budget replacement, replacing a known market, cheaper, better database, to your point, or a net new market, right? Which is always tricky. So I think the biggest threat to a lot of the startups and incumbents, the biggest threat by the startups and incumbents is either one, do something cheaper, better in a current market, or find a net new market that they haven't thought about yet. And if you can win that net new market before the rest, then that's what we call the, you know, the blue ocean strategy. Is that essentially what Snowflake has done? Started with cheaper, better, and now they're building the data cloud? I think it's evolution, you're correct. So they said cheaper, better, and in the castle and cloud, we talk about they actually built deep IP. So they went a known category, data warehouses, right? You had Teradata, Redshift, Snowflake, cheaper, better, faster. And now they say, okay, once you have the customers, let's change the name of the game and create a data cloud. And it's TBD whether or not Snowflake can win data cloud. Like we talked about uh, Roxette, one of my investments, that's actually moved the goalpost saying, oh, data cloud is nice, but real-time data is where it's at, and Snowflake and those guys can't play in real-time no, data. No, they're not in a position to play in real-time data. Right. I mean, that's right. So again, so that's an example of a startup moving the goalpost on what previously was a startup that moved the goalpost on an incumbent. And when you think about edge, it's going to be real-time AI inferencing at the edge, right. and you're right, Snowflake's not set up well at all for that. So competition-wise, how do the people compete? Because this is the, what Databricks did the same exact thing. I have Ollie on the record going back years. Well, we love Amazon, we're only on Amazon. Now he's talking multi-cloud. So, you know, once you yeah. get there, you kind of change your tune because you got some scale, but then you got new potential entrants coming in like Rockset. Correct. So, but then, and, yeah, and, and you if you add up the, the market caps of just those two companies, Databrick and Snowflake, it's, it's much larger than the database market. So this 
So we're defining new markets now. I, I think those market caps, especially Snowflake that's in the public market, Databricks still private, is um, optimism that there's a second or third act in the database space left to be unlocked. And if you look at what's going on in that space, these yeah. real-time analytics or real-time apps, for sure there's optimism there. But, but to John's point, you're right, like, you earn the right to play the next act. But it, it's tricky because um, startups disrupt the incumbents, they become incumbents, and they're also victims of their own success, right? So the, you're, you're, there, there's technical debt, there's also business model debt. So you're victims of their own business model, victims, victims of their own success, and so what got you here may not get you to the next phase. And so I yeah. think for Amazon, that's a question. For uh, Databricks and Snowflake, that's a question, is what got them here, can they play to the next act? And look, um, yeah. Apple did it, multiple acts, well, I mean, I think almost I, not. I, I mean, I think, it's, I think it's, 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 it's whether you take shortcuts or not. If you have debt, you're making a little bit of a shortcut bet. Yep. Okay, that's cool. But ultimately what you're getting at here is beachhead thinking. Get a beachhead, Correct. get in the market, and then sequence to a different position. Classic competitive strategy 101. That's hard to do, because you want to win the beachhead, and take a little technical debt and business model debt, cheat a little bit, and then is it not fortified yet? Okay. So beachhead, to expansion is the question. That's every board meeting, John and Dave, that we're in, right? It's um, it's called, you need a narrow enough wedge to land. And it, it is like, I don't want the tip of the spear, I want the poison on the tip of the spear, right? <laughs> you want, especially in this cloud market, a, a super focused wedge to land. And the problem is, as a founder, as an investor, you're always thinking about the global max, right? Like the, the ultimate platform winner, but you don't get the right to play the early, the late innings if you don't make out the early innings. And so, Narrow beach head, yep. sharp wedge, but you got to land in a space, a place of real estate with adjacent TAM, yep. adjacent markets, right? Like Uber, black cars, taxis, food, whatever, right? Uh, Snowflake, data warehouse, data cloud. And so I think the key with all startups is you'll hit some ceiling of, of market size. Yep. Is there a second ramp? So it's 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 the art is when to scale and how fast to scale. Right. Yeah. Picking when, how fast, and yeah. which which bets to play. So it was tough. And so the best companies are always think about their second or third act while the first act's still going. Yeah, and leveraging cloud to refactor. I think that's right. the key to Snowflake was they had the wedge with data warehouse, they, they saw the position, but refactored and, and in the cloud with services that they right. knew Teradata wouldn't use. Correct. And they're in. From there, it's just competitive, IP, crank, and, go to market. And then, then you have the other unnatural things. You have channel, you have install basic customers, right? And then you start you know, selling more stuff to the same channel to the same customers. That's what Amazon's doing, all the incumbents do that. Amazon's got you know, 300 services now, launching more this yeah. week. So now they have channel distribution, right? Every credit card for all the developers and they have install based customers. And so they will just launch new things yeah. and serve the customers. So the startups had to disrupt them somehow. Well, it's always great to chat with Jerry. Every year we, we discover and we riff and we identify in real time new stuff. But we were talking about this whole vertical horizontal scale and kind of castles early on years ago and now it's happened. You were right, congratulations, that's a great <laughs> thesis. There's real advantages to build on a cloud. You can get the, right. you can build a business there. Right. That's your thesis. And by the way, these markets are changing, so if you're smart, you can actually compete. I think you compete, and to Dave's earlier point, you have to adapt, right? And so, what's the Darwin thing is not the strongest, but the most adaptable. So both Amazon is to adapt, and the startups are the most adaptable will win. Where are you, you guys might have talked about this, where do you stand on the, the cost of goods sold issue? Oh, I, I think, Everything's true, right? I, I think you can save money if you, at some scale to repatriate your cloud, but again, Wall Street rewards growth versus COGS, right? So I think if you had a choice between a dollar of growth versus a dollar of reducing COGS, people choose growth right now. That may not always be the case, but at some point, if you're a company at some scale and the dollars of growth are slowing down, you definitely have to reduce the dollars in costs, and so you start optimizing cloud costs. And that could be going to Amazon, Azure, Google, reducing Negotiate, cost. Yeah. <laughs> no, or, 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 you, or you have no They'll visibility on new right. net, new opportunities. So growth is about new opportunities. Right. If you're repatriating things, there's no growth. It's, it's not either That's or, cogs or growth, yeah, right? Yeah, right but They're both valued differently, so you can do both. And so I don't think it's what's your priorities. You can't do everything at once, so if I'm a founder or CEO, or in this case, investor, I said, hey, Dave and John, if you said, I can either save you 25 basis points in gross margin, or I can increase another 10% top line this year, 
I'm going to say increase the top line, yeah. we'll deal with the gross margin later. Not that it's not important, but right now, the early yeah. phase Priorities. is growth. Yeah. All right, Jerry Chen, great to see you. Great to have you on Great Cube Alumni. Great guest analyst. Thanks for breaking it down. Cube coverage here in Las Vegas for reInvent. Back in person, of course, it's a virtual event. We've got a hybrid event for Amazon as well as the Cube. I'm John Furrier, you're watching the leader in worldwide tech coverage. Thanks for watching. <laughs>